This is the third and last of three thoughts on the subject of milk. The most successful creatures on this planet have been mammals. This is based on the protection of slow maturing offspring through the long nourishment on mother's milk. From earliest times man has domesticated other mammals for their milk cattle, goats and sheep especially. Milk has been not only an emergency supplement to mother's milk for children but a wholesome part of adult diets. In the ages before refrigeration milk decomposed quite quickly so people learned to store it and make it saleable by making it into butter and into cheese and yoghurt and variations of those products which are both delightful and nourishing. Historically, before the days of transport, milk was part of the subsistence diet of all rural communities. Almost every family kept a cow and hand milked it. As early communities became more specialised, some kept several cows and sold milk, butter and cheese whilst others provided other products and services. As towns and cities grew, it became more difficult to supply more milk to surrounding, from, the, from the surrounding countryside within the day. So the creation of milk houses grew in towns and cities. Some of the Beck family, who were relatives of mine from this parish, went to Liverpool to run a milk house and supply fresh milk every day to people in the city. My great-grandfather was a butter factor in this parish and bought butter from farms and sent it to Halifax. He supplied businesses owned by relatives and would, who would pay him half of a £20 note sent by post, telling him that if the next consignment didn't contain some rancid butter from a farmer they'd collected from, he would get the other half of the £20 note. Transport enabled fresh milk and milk products to be transported in towns to towns from the country each day. In time, road transport and the building of dairies facil facilitated the expansion of milk production in the countryside. My father-in-law was a champion dairy farmer in Lancashire and a champion hand milker. We were milk producers for 20 years and uh, carton milk for sale in the early years of this business. I enjoyed the discipline and the routine of getting up at 6 o'clock every morning to milk the cows and it's a routine which we've never abandoned. The Second World War meant that the country had to maximise food production and the production of milk was an essential part of our war effort. A statutory board, the Milk Marketing Board, was set up to buy and distribute all milk. Dairy farming expanded and modernised, Cumbria becoming one of the largest milk producing counties. After the war, milk con consumption continued, with free school milk being provided for all children. However, our membership of the European community meant that the Milk Marketing Board had to go, which resulted in a less satisfactory outcome than we had, or one, that, uh, or one they had in Europe. Eventually, the rise in production culminated in overproduction, and prices fell, bringing hardship to many farmers. Many farmers left the industry, some have diversified into milk products, some became bigger, some much bigger. But for many, it became a hard life with meagre returns. It can make us forget that milk is the most precious and indispensable food product there is. It should be cherished and respected. As whether it's cow's milk, ewe's milk, or goat's milk, or mother's milk. 
It's the one product without which we could not have lived and grown into healthy adults. We must never forget that this immaculately devised, comprehensively proportioned product, the only one we have all survived on at some time, is the only complete nourishment of our kind and should be revered, nurtured as a product and supported through its producers and product manufacturers. Thank you.